this dinner party, Sapi told me about a letter he had gotten from one of my old students, Jacques Bataviri. Jacques living in France now. We won't hold that against him. But in this letter, Jacques told Sapi of a most wonderful toy he had seen at a party himself. And they called this toy the spyglass. And people would look through this toy and... <laughs> What they looked at appeared to move three times closer. It appeared to be three times wider and nine times larger in area. Sapi said, oh, I'd love to have one of those toys. I said, all right, I'll make you one. He said, you've never even seen one of these. How are you going to make me one? I said, I'm a scientist. I'll make you one. And I thought, now they called this toy the spy glass. What would you expect to find in something called a spy glass? Signore. Glass, of course. Now, there are several kinds of glass. There is the glass as in a window. If I put a piece of window glass into each end of a tube and look at this young man, he looks exactly the same. So it's not the window glass. What other kind of glass might we use? Senor? Magnifying. The magnifying glass. Or oh, when we wear them on our eyes, we call them the spectacle glass. Do you know what they call those pieces of glass, the magnifying glass, the spectacle glass? There's a special name for them. Senora? No, no. Senor? You forgot. That happens to me all the time. Uh, Signore. Lenses, yes. Do you know where the word lens comes from? What's my favorite thing to do? Eat, yes. Have you ever had the lentil soup? Yes, it's very good, yes. Well, in the soup, there are tiny beans. If you look at them one way, they are round. If you look at them the other way, they look just like a little lens. Lentil, lens, there's where the word comes from. And I had several of these in my laboratory. Now, there are actually two kinds of lens. There are the convex lens, which are very fat in the middle and very skinny by the edge. And there are the concave lens, which are very skinny in the middle and very fat by the edge. And I had several of these in my laboratory. And I went back to my laboratory and I tried several different combinations. And I found one combination, if I look at this young man, he appears to move three times closer. His face appears to be three times wider and nine times larger in area. On the very first evening after hearing about this wonderful toy called the spyglass, I had made my own very first spyglass, but it was just a toy, and I thought I could improve upon this. At the time, I was teaching at the University of Padua. Padua was part of the Venetian state. Do you know Venice? What do they have in Venice? Water, yes, the canales, the canals, the gondolas, but also some of the very best glassmakers in all of the world. Of course, they're Italian. What would you expect? So I went down to the glassmakers, and I said, Senors, you must give me some of your very best lenses. They said, Senor Galileo, for you, of course. They gave me a nice collection of lenses. I went back to my laboratory, and I tried many combinations, and I found one combination. If I look at this young man now, he appears to move eight times closer. His face appears to be eight times wider and 64 times larger in area. Well, now I had a very good spyglass. As I say, I was teaching at the University of Padua. Padua being part of the Venetian state, I knew that the Doge of Venice would love to have a spyglass. Do you know the Doge? No. Who is in charge of this city? The mayor. And if the mayor says, come here, signore, what would you do? You'd go right there. If the Doge says, come here, Galileo, I go right there. So now you have an idea who the Doge is. Uh, and I knew the Doge would love to have a spyglass. Venice, it's right on the ocean. Sometimes there are pirates. They come, they attack Venice. The Doge can send someone down to defend the city, or there might be emissaries coming from another country, and the Doge can send someone down to greet them, or there might be ships coming from the New World or the East bringing wonderful treasures, and the Doge can send the tax collectors down so he gets his share first. So I knew the Doge would love to have a spyglass. So I took the doge and all of the senators down to the campanile um, bell tower. And I get the doge to the top of the bell tower. And I say, doge, look out there. Do you see any ships out there today? The doge says, no, there's no ships out there today. I look through the spyglass. I said, yes, there's a ship out there. It will be here in two hours. The doge says, no, <laughs> there's no ships out there today. I tell the doge to look through the spyglass. The doge takes the spyglass. <sighs> I don't know what I was thinking. The very first spyglass I made using a piece of lead pipe. Have you ever held the lead? I almost knocked the doge off the top of the bell tower. What would they do to you if you knocked the mayor off the top of this building? 
kick you out of it. Well, yes, they probably do that at least. So I prop the doge up nice and securely, and the doge looks through the spyglass. He says, yes, there's a ship out there. Well, all of the senators did not have a spyglass, so they're all going, oh, the doge is seeing things, but he pays no attention to them. He starts looking around with the spyglass. He looks down at the farmers in the market. Oh, very nice vegetables. He looks at the fishermen. Oh, very nice fish. He looks in a window. Shouldn't have done that. One hour later, there's a tiny dot on the horizon. The doge looks at the dot with the spyglass. He says, I believe that's Massimo's ship. Well, now all of the senators are going, oh, the doge is seeing people on the water. His mind is gone. But what sailed into the harbor of Venice one hour later? Massimo's ship. Well, the doge was very impressed with this. He gave me a big raise. I had only been making 350 florin a year, hardly enough to survive as a professor of mathematics and philosophy. The doge gave me a raise to 1,000 florin a year. My position is professor for life. I, of course, gave the doge the spyglass, and I went back to my laboratory, and I thought, well, this is very good, and now I have a nice salary, my position for life, but I don't have a spyglass. Well, I have to make another spyglass, but I'd used all of the lenses the glassmakers had given me, so I went back to the glassmakers and I said, Senors, you must give me your very, very best lenses. They said, Senor Galileo, we gave you all of the lenses we had. I said, then you must teach me to make the glass. And they taught me to grind the glass, and they taught me to polish the glass. And now, now I have a spyglass. If I look at this young man right now, he appears to move 20 times closer. His face appears to be 20 times wider and 400 times larger in area. You don't want to see that, no. 